Hi, friends. I'm Heather Miller, CEO and founder of social impact startup Grasshopper, talent acquisition and DEI specialist, mom of two humans and three fur babies, most under four, former professional ballet and hip hop dancer, yoga teacher, interior designer, caregiver, provider, retirement planner, innovator, social connector, and the list goes on. As you can tell from my bio, I've always taken drive to the extreme and for the most part done pretty well juggling all of my hats. However, I say this on behalf of most of us, the past three years have been very challenging. My personal experience included moving to an unknown city, the unexpected death of my mother and the birth of my first child two weeks later, launching a startup during maternity leave, the pandemic, building diversity strategies for a global corporation in the wake of George Floyd's death, another baby, and then the icing on the cake, a layoff. I felt like I was approaching a midlife crisis with no space to do so. As a result, I've been thinking about balance and whether that's actually a thing. Join me as I speak with some amazing thought leaders and women in my life to understand how they keep the fire going and the lights on while staying sane. We'll explore drive, juggling priorities, taking no prisoners with your schedule, love and sickness, pursuing your dreams, enjoying the journey and figuring out what is right for you. We hope these conversations help you err on the side of midlife epiphany versus midlife crisis. Welcome to Balanceness. Indra, welcome to Balanceness. Hello. Hi. Hello, hello. Of course. I'm so excited. Um, I feel like this has been a long time coming and um, I'm excited to learn more about you. I've actually been dying to kind of have this conversation since we met was it a year ago at the Kendra Scott or was that even yeah. two years ago? A year no, ago. No, it was a year ago. Yeah. Okay. So we met at the um, Kendra Scott Well Institute. It was like a day for women. Mm-hmm. It was like the most uh, incredible sort of professional development type conference that I've been at in a while. Um, I don't know if you, yeah, it was so energizing. It, it was, was so super, energizing. Wasn't it Super energizing? I very just, empowering. Yeah. Yeah. And we were both on panels and you were so kind to come see my panel. And, um, I think we just hit it off. So, um, I've been excited to have this conversation. Yes. No, I'm so happy to be here and I'm so glad we were able to, to reconnect and, yeah. um, and, and be sitting here today. Yeah. So I would love if you could introduce yourself to the community, because I think you can probably do it better than than I can. And since we're talking about balance, let's like talk about all parts of you. Yes. Yeah, so, um, OK, so my name is Indra Gutierrez. Um, you know, I am the president and owner of a General Construction Company here in Houston. And, um, you know, I'm married. I've been married to my husband for 11 years, and he is also my business partner. So we're together all the time. (laughs) Uh, I, we have a golden retriever. His name is Nico. He is uh, very spoiled. He comes to work with me every day. And, um, you know, I, I love, I am, I'm a big advocate when it comes to wellness. So I love to work out. I love being outdoors. Um, I used to be a marathon runner. I love to do yoga. Um, you know, it, I, I still do soul cycle every weekend. So I, I think um, exercise and really taking care of your body is really good for your mind. Um, I'm so glad that you included all of those pieces. And um, I was I was going to ask you, I didn't know what your workout preference was. So I we've, we're going to play a little game at the end and I'll incorporate okay. that. But but Nico gets to come to work. That is like a dream. I've got three dogs and they're nuts. Like they, they would not allow me to work at all. I, how did you work that out? <laughs> yeah so uh you know that was oh my gosh he's he's really good he gets really excited when people come into the office but 
um, you know, to me, that was a non-negotiable of bringing him to the office. So <laughs> he, you know, he comes where I go. <laughs> I love it. He gets to live a full life too, a life of balance. That's so yes. cool. Yes. And we're, we're, uh, our office is surrounded by like small park and trees. So he's outside all the time. He's, he's so lucky. He's such a lucky dog. Living his best life through you. <laughs> yeah. Um, so uh, we're talking about balance and I would love to know what balance means to you. Uh, balance means to me, it means uh, really being able to um, to accomplish your goals without feeling, you know, burned out is uh, really being able to sleep at night without feeling uh, that high level of stress. You know what I mean? Like having that peace of mind and being energized about your day uh, while still accomplishing your goals. Mm -hmm. That definitely makes sense. Um, sleeping at night, that is, uh, something I struggle with a lot. I think, especially for people who are either ambitious or they have busy minds and, um, they haven't quite tapped into meditation. They don't know how to like thought drop. Sometimes I do, but sometimes I, I lose that practice. It definitely, um, sleep is impacted. So I think that's, that's so important to say, like at the end of the day, you need to know that, you know, you're proud of yourself. You've accomplished what you set out to accomplish. And if not, the next day is there for you to yeah. fulfill, uh, what needs to be fulfilled, but you know, at the, at the end of the day, let's sleep well, we need that. Yes. Yes. And, and what's in your control as well, because there's things that are going to be out of your control and you can't dwell on that or, or lose sleep over that. You really just have to focus on yourself and what you, uh, what your intentions were for the day. And, you know, if you did the best that you could and you know that you're, you know, you'll be at, at, at peace at the end of the day. Do you set intentions for your day? Uh, I do. Yes, I do. Yeah. I think every day, and I think it starts the night before my, my ritual starts the night before I get, I get ready. It's like uh game on, you know? So I, I have that mentality to where I'm able to turn it on and turn it off. And, um, I, I went, you know, right before I go to bed, I set my intentions for the next day. And uh, I go to sleep and then I wake up and uh, I already know what I want to do, what needs to get done. And then I get to the office and, you know, uh, I talk to my team and then we, we get to work. I love that. I've never thought about setting intentions the night before. I think that's so important because um, I don't know about you, but like, as soon as I wake up, I mean, I've got little kids, like I said, I've got three dogs, like the day starts, whether I'm ready for it or not. And the, I never actually have time for myself and to be super mindful about my day. So I love the idea of starting it the night before. So get, give me an example of like what an intention would be for you. Uh, so it would be, sometimes it depends, right? What are, what's the goal for the day? What is the goal for the day and what do I want to achieve? And, um, and then sometimes it could be, okay, I have an event in the evening. I have to get all these things done. How am I going to get that done? And also really, it's so important to, to, to talk to yourself and really be, um, you know, when you have your bad days or your good days, it's really to be able to acknowledge what you're feeling and then be able to move on and set a new intention of like, okay, yesterday was a really bad day. Um, you know, tomorrow will be a better day and you did the best that you could. And, uh, you know, you're going to start with a positive attitude. And I will say, you know, I think for me, it's been the, I know that I am where I'm supposed to be because I'm energized by it every day. So even on my bad days, even on my worst days, I still wake up the next day with a, 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 a you know, a, a go get it attitude. That's, that's, that's amazing. Um, I, many years ago was, um, working with an executive coach and she called, and I love this. She called those like 
I, the sort of ruminating thoughts or self doubt sort of thoughts about bad, bad days or, you know, bad actions, the itty bitty shitty committee. Um, and I'm actually just reading a book right now called the artist way. And, and she calls it the censor. And she actually says like, you wake up in the morning and you write everything down, just stream of consciousness. And, um, what that allows to do is like, rid the sensor essentially like get rid of all of those just like dump all those thoughts in the garbage <laughs> so you can start with with a clear mind so sounds like you've got that down i love it and and i think it's been through uh just a lot of experiences and i i don't think it was something that was built overnight i think when i was younger i would dwell on things and you know it would take over but um, uh, I now have gotten to the point where I just, I address it and then I move on because I, I can't dwell on it. I have things to do. I also have a lot of more responsibility, right? I have a whole team in my shoulders. So it's not about me anymore. It's about what's best for the team. So I think that has been really the biggest difference. That's interesting that you say that having other people relying on you, it's the same as like, if you have kids or a partner, like it's not you it's not about you your your uh attitude for the day is going to impact everyone yeah. else so it's important yeah. that it's clear and intentional so let's talk about that i want to hear about like your early career ambitions what were those and at what point did you align yourself with it uh in with the uh construction industry yeah so um you know when i was in college i actually studied political science and my last semester of school, um, actually my last year, I did two internships. And one of the internships was at the mayor, the Houston mayor's office. Uh, and I, you know, my experience there, I, I just, I realized that what I really wanted to accomplish, it, it was, it was not going to happen being in politics. And the whole reason that I was drawn to politics was to really be able to make an impact in the lives of others and really be able to help people out. Um, I come from an upbringing where I struggled and a lot, and I had to do a lot of things on my own. And um, I really wanted to, to provide different avenues for different people so that they don't have to go through what I went through. Uh, so, you know, then I immediately, as soon as I got, you know, into the internship, I realized, oh my gosh, what I want to do is going to require it's going to take me like decades, you know? So um, I thought about, you know, I think if I go the business route, I can accomplish that same goal with just a different avenue. And that's what I did. I started working at Floor and that was, you know, it's an EPC company. So um, I started managing subcontractors for huge, you know, $10, $10 billion chemical plants. And, um, you know, I, I started there and then I immediately just, loved it. And I saw that a lot of the natural skills that I had were really good for that industry. So, um, so it just became, you know, something very natural to me that I was good at. And also it was challenging at the same time, which was, uh, something that really interested me. Um, I love to learn new things. I'm curious. And, um, you know, that career gave me everything that I was looking for. Um, in, in, you know, at, at the end of the day, really. What, um, you know, if you could hindsight 2020, you're looking back, like what were those strengths? Like what, what are the things that you're good at? Oh, I can, I can multitask. I can work under pressure and I can solve problems and stay focused. And I'm also, um, I, I was able to really, um, have, build those relationships with people, whether you were the executive, the CEO, or you were in the field uh, working with your hands. So I, I've I dealt with so many different types of people from all over the world. Uh, and, um, you know, I, I was really able to uh, get to know them and build those relationships, which really helped me in my career as well. And then um, I think it was about 12 years in, you decided to do your executive MBA. What were the decision drivers around that? Yeah, so uh, by that time, I already I had experience in, uh, you know, building mega capital projects, construction projects. 
And um, I wanted to know the business side of it, right? How, how did, how, why does somebody decide to build this facility? Like, why did they decide to do it? What are the economics behind it? And I was interested on the business side. And then also at the same time, uh, I had my own construction company. So I wanted to know, um, I wanted to have more information on and more knowledge really about running a business from the business side. Uh, because those are two different components. You know, you can be really good at executing construction projects, but you also, there's a much larger picture, which is running a, a company. And uh, I, I, that's, that, that was the really main driver. I just, I felt like I wanted more knowledge and that's exactly what I got. I mean, that program really changed my life. Um, it's, it made a huge impact. The knowledge that I was seeking, I got it and, you know, much more. Okay, so tell us about your company. Do you pronounce it Gutier? Yes, Gutier. Uh -huh. Gutier. Yeah. Um, so tell us about that. I'm curious about what drives someone to start their own construction business. I'm I'm fascinated by this because you could have gone the route where you climbed sort of the let's call it corporate ladder. I don't know if that exists within construction, but <laughs> the construction ladder, but you decided to do your own thing, as you said, with your husband. So tell us about, about that. Yeah, no, you're exactly right. Yeah, no, my uh, initially when I first started my career, my goal was to be a CEO. So uh, every career move that I made since I started was uh, very strategic about the positions and um, what I was doing. And then this really was unexpected. Uh, but I think uh, at the end of the day, it's really, I wanted more. I wanted, I, I wanted, uh, to make an impact, right? I wanted to make an impact and not only, I wanted to work on something that was larger than myself. Because at that point I was just focused on me, right? Like it's just about me and how you move up that career ladder. Ladder, But I, I wanted more. I wanted more out of uh, life. And I really was still getting called into, I, I still want to be able to contribute to society and to the community in a different way. And, um, I was gravitated towards it, but we were, we were so naive of how hard this was going to be. <laughs> so I used to manage the subcontractors, right? And I, I used to award these huge contracts and I said, oh my gosh, you know, if they could do it, so could I, you know? And, uh, you know, I'm like, it seems, doesn't seem too hard, but I was very wrong. <laughs> it was very, very challenging, but I think at the end of the day, it was, uh, you know, we just decided to do it. And I, uh, you know, my purpose has always been, you know, um, to go beyond the profits, right? It's to build um, a company and to have, um, to see the mission and the, the vision to, to be able to go beyond profits and make an impact in the life of others, which is, the people that work with me, right? They are the extension. They're the immediate people that I look out for. And then also the community around us uh, on the outside. But to me, that has been so, um, you know, fulfilling that it's, I love business. I love strategizing. I love solving problems and it's important to make money, but I think there's more to that. So I feel very um, whole when I can combine community, business, people, you know, and profits. It's, it's amazing. Like, and, and knowing that I'm working towards a much larger goal that is bigger than myself. And, yeah. yeah. So it, yeah, it's, it's pretty amazing. Well, I was going to ask you to go further into that impact. You did a little bit, but I would imagine it is around like the projects that you and choose that you choose to engage in and, you know, with and the people um, with the people. Is it to make sure that they have like a good, healthy work environment that they feel taken care of, that that trickles down to their families? Tell me a little bit more about that. Yes, yes. So, um, yeah, so we want to make sure that we take care of our team members, right, first. And it's um, it does come with some sacrifice when it comes to when we talk about the organization, right? It's I, I'm very transparent as to why I made the decisions that I made, which is I am always looking for the interest, the best interest of the company. But in this situation, the company is them. At the end of the day, it's going to impact them. 
in a good or in a bad way. So I always talk about, hey, let's uh, let's come together as a team. Like we literally all will win or we will all lose. It's very different than corporate because you know we're 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 still growing. So uh, there's there's a lot of accountability and a lot of responsibility that comes with the roles that we have in our company. But um, I I really do try to provide people with opportunities and with that career progression that they see for themselves and to have that security for their family. Um, and where I'm very, you know, very straightforward and transparent, uh, I will share the good and the bad, the good and the bad news with everybody. So everybody understands where we're at as a company, uh, whether it's good or bad. And I think uh, being able to share the success with everybody um, is so important. And I mean, I, I, I'm a big, big believer, like you have to be able to share that with your whole team. It's not just for me. You know what I mean? I definitely know what you mean. It's something that um, I think about all the time in my day job as I'm running Grasshopper. I think the transparency, the team goals and the team celebrations are are really important. Mm-hmm. Um, so you're a woman in construction. There's a lot of firsts uh, that you must experience as you're building out this company. I know that you are very active with women on boards. Um, It's a lot of responsibility to be a first in many different categories. How do you shoulder that responsibility? Yeah. So um, to me, you know, it's very, it's being transparent, being transparent and being um, having integrity. So I will always, uh, try to do the right thing. And, you know, as I said, is, is the good and the bad, you know, but I don't, um, I always try to explain why I do what I do. Um, and I think people are going to, um, not understand you. It's hard to understand the position, this position that I'm in, unless you have gone through it, unless you're in it. Uh, so I do try my best to explain that to to my team why I do what I do, um, and uh, but it's it's hard it's hard you're not going to please everybody but I do try to lead by example, and the expectations that I have for my team are the same as I have for myself. So um, so it, there's no you know there's no picking and choosing. Do you know what I mean? So. Um, so yeah, so I really do try to lead by example and I do try to, I think I, now that I'm, I'm older and, um, I do try to be more empathetic than when I was, you know, younger and in corporate, uh, trying to, um, climb that ladder, uh, because it is about people at the end of the day. So, um, that's something that I've learned through my journey of, of having my own company now. It's just very different. And um, I, I've learned um, to share that my, my insights so that people don't have to go through that pain that I went through as I navigated my career. I, I really do try to save people from that burden as much as I can, but I will be honest with you. So whether it's good or bad. <laughs> And do you have any role models? So uh, to me, it's every time I see, uh, whether it's a, a man or a woman uh, running their own companies, I, I have respect for them because I understand how hard it is. And it's it's something that people will not understand, as I said, unless they are in it. Um, I can explain things to you, but you don't feel what the pain that comes through running your own company. There's a lot of pain associated with it that I don't think people talk about. So you have to be able to push through um, the bad days because there was going to be a lot of great days as well. You know, and it's just a journey. It's really a journey. A company takes decades to build. So it's not a sprint. If you're trying to build a long, a sustainable business, it's a long game. It's not a overnight success. Uh, and you're going to have your ups and downs. And I think, uh, for me, that's like, my role models are, are, you know, the, the people that are really, that are doing this and that are walking the same path as I am. Can you give us some examples of the, the pain that you're alluding to? 
Yeah, it's just that the whenever um, the failures, right, that you go through as a business, if um, if it doesn't, if a project doesn't go well, like in our situation, right, or if um, you have to do a turnaround restructure and you have to let people go or, you know, layoffs or, I mean, all of that is just so painful. Um, it's, it's, it's the rejection, right? So many people tell you no. <laughs> so you have to be able to pick yourself back up and, and try to, um, think about, okay, what could you do better so mm -hmm. that that next time can be a yes. You know, so always um, be able to look at yourself and be honest about where are your shortfalls so that you can improve and then be able to achieve your goals, whether um, yeah, there's a lot of no's. Like, and it's when you're growing a business, there's a lot. <laughs> so uh, that's painful, you know, every time you get turned down for a job or for anything, it's, it's, um, is it's painful so you just have to be able to pick yourself back up and and try again yeah definitely an exercise and resilience yeah. yes and you work with your husband what does the division of labor look like there and then at the end of the day we're going to start talking a little bit about balance in my next question for you but what does that look like when you know, you, you come home, how, how do you manage, uh, both the relationship of you as co-owners of this company and then partners at home? Yeah. So I am so fortunate to have an amazing husband. He is, uh, my best friend and, um, I would not be doing what I'm doing right now if it wasn't for him. Like he is such a big support very big support. He is uh, the person that encourages me every day and tells me that I can do it. So um, I get really emotional because he is, I've been so blessed to uh, have him in my life. So, um, but ever since we started dating, I've always been like, hey, this is what I want to do for my career. So you're going to have to be along for, for the ride, you know, from from delaying having kids to, okay, who's doing what at home? So those expectations were set right at the beginning, <laughs> many, many years ago. So, uh, you know, he agreed. He said, yeah, I'll, whatever you want to do, I'm here for it. And, um, you know, that has been the journey since we we started dating and then we got married. And uh, But at the moment right now, so yeah, so we... Um, we, you know, the moment we get home, there's times we get home and we usually eat dinner and we talk about the day, right? Like how the day went. And then um, a lot of the stuff we started to outsource uh, because a lot of the home stuff, because now it's just, you know, my time is not worth cooking or cleaning. So all of the things that uh, I, I, I just had to outsource because I wasn't going to do it and he wasn't going to do it either. But before I used to be the one that would clean and he's the one that would cook. So uh, that's how we would divide our responsibilities at home. And he would all, you know, he still takes care of a lot of the house stuff. Like he knows how to fix everything. So um, yeah, so he's a very, very handyman. But um, but yeah, I think now, so I, so he focuses on project operations, the day-to-day -day field execution, like hour by hour. And I oversee the projects from a project management standpoint. So a lot more high level. Uh, but, um, you know, we really go through it together. Um, I am, I think we're both really good at seeing like when one of us has a bad day, the other one has to kind of be the one that cheers the other one up. So when I see that he's having a really bad day, I, I try to stay calm and be the calm one. And it, he, I think is able to do that as well. So when he sees me having a bad day or being really upset, um, he, he kind of, you know, calms himself down as well to where not like we not, both of us can't be extreme pissed upset all the time because it's not good for the organization. You know, like you just can't have that. Um, 
So you have to be mature and you have to really put your ego to the side and be humble about uh, the journey that you're on. Mm, well, it sounds like you found the perfect partner in crime and you you are so lucky to do that because um, you've really designed your environment. Um, you know, a lot of us uh, either fall into roles or we know where we're going, but you can't control the people around you and who you interact with. And it sounds like you've done a very good job of, of design curating that for yourself. How cool. Yes. Yes. And, you know, whenever we have kids, it's going to be uh, the same, you know, I believe in uh, really being able to split the responsibilities and uh, he knows that. So <laughs> yeah, you have to, there's no, I'm just telling you from someone who has little toddlers, uh, it definitely, it definitely takes a village. Yes. Um, so yeah, whether, whether uh, you like it or not, you're going to be split in the responsibilities. Um, you identified time management as one of your top strengths, and I can definitely see that. So how do you employ that so you have some time for yourself, your wellness, your balance? Yeah, so I um, I prioritize. I prioritize and I'm very disciplined with my time and I have very strong boundaries. And I say no a lot. <laughs> so <laughs> uh, it ha I'm very, very intentional with my time and who I spend my time with. Uh, so it's, you know, it's, it's valuable time. So I stay disciplined. I have a schedule and I stick to my schedule. Uh, and that's, that's even my social schedule, you know, that can sometimes, if you say no, if you say yes to everything, you're going to feel so depleted with energy and, uh, you just can't be your best self. Um, so I say no a lot. Like if I, on the weekend, if I need to rest, I will rest versus going to a social event. So that is really important. So for me, you know, the the company comes first and during the week, that's the priority and everything else really does. Um, I have to see if, you know, if I have time for it, then I'll do it. Um, and there's a lot of things that are uh, important when it comes to the company, because it could also be some social events that are important because of the company that I, I do have to attend. But my schedule, I run a tight schedule and I I make sure that I achieve my goals. Like if I set my priorities, like this needs to get done, I have to be out of here at this time. And I'm like that with like every hour of my day. And that's how I'm able to accomplish so much. And I learned this actually when I was doing my second master's because I was working on a huge project. So I was working like 60 hours a week and then I, I was going to school at night and I, I mean, at that time I was like, oh my God, I didn't realize how much time I was wasting before I started that program. And once I started to realize, okay, I need to do all of these things in this amount of time, how am I going to get that done? That's when I started to learn how to, um, how to do time management. Like, how do I make sure that I achieve everything that I want to do without feeling burnt out or uh, stressed out? Uh, but I will say, you know, my morning also starts really early. I wake up at 4 a.m. and I go work out and I get ready for the day because the moment I wake up and I show up to the office, I'm bombarded by so many people. So uh, you have to try to head get, get ahead of the game. And that's why I do my intentions the night before, because then I, I at least know what's coming. And sometimes, you know, there's things that come up that you don't plan for and, um, then you have to adjust. But yeah, time management has been so crucial to where I still, I get, I have time for myself. Like I really do. And it's because I say, I'm, I have boundaries. I say no, and I stick to it. And, and I'm able to rest to where when I come to work on Monday, I'm refreshed and I'm ready to go. That is incredible because a lot of us let the boundaries slide mm -hmm. a little bit because th there are th things that are important around you. So it's, it's um, whether it's, you know, family members asking for time or something or friends in a conversation, as you said, like, you know, you've, you've got to have a social life as well. The, the working out four o'clock in the morning, that's, that's impressive. <laughs> I'm usually, yeah, I'm usually at the in class by five. My class starts at five, 
And, uh, but I mean, I love it, right? I grew up grow up working out and it's just part of my life. And um, now that my, you know, now that I don't have time, I have to find the time. So I'm like, I squeeze it in. <laughs> yeah, because I imagine if you left any of these things, the self-care to the end of the day, oh, yeah. they what wouldn't happened? get done. Things yeah. would get pushed into it. They don't happen. No, because I, I tried that and it didn't work. Yeah, I tried it. And that's when I switched my schedule because I said, okay, if I continue to wait until the end of my day, I'm never going to work out. And, you know, and the, yeah, it's just a bad cycle. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. What is the number one piece of advice that you would give to someone um, to achieve a sustainable lifestyle? I think it's it's being honest with yourself and being honest about the type of life that you want to live and what's important to you. And I think that looks different for everybody. So it's really staying true to who you are and what's important to you and what your goals are and um, whether people can understand it or not. I think it's important for you to be uh, happy with what you're doing and be able to set realistic goals and expectations for that so that, you know, you can be happy. I love that. It's like so simple and, and so true. That really resonates with me. Okay. We're going to play a quick game that I call okay. yin or yang. It's kind of like a, would you rather, um, okay. team dinner or, or solo dinner? Ooh, uh, team dinners, team dinners. What do you guys do for team dinners? Oh my gosh. We have so many events. <laughs> We have so many social events. Yeah. So I, I try to I try to get the team together because all of our team members are spread out. Uh they're in different projects. So not everybody works together. So it's so important for me to get the, the the community together and get people to get to know each other and engaged and be excited about uh uh what you know being around each other. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I love um, to plan events. Like I love to plan events. Like I yeah, I, I love I it. I can so much. see that. I, I could see that from you. I, I feel love like you're those. a fantastic project manager in, <laughs> yeah. in any respect. <laughs> yeah, um, I love to host. Like I love to host house parties as well. I don't do it as often because of my time, but I love a good like come over. Let me like I love the whole um the hosting. I do too. As long as I don't feel stress, like stress in the process of getting oh, there yeah. like the mm -hmm. cooking and oh yeah yeah I guess that's time management yeah. <laughs> yes and then I I outsource a lot of stuff so <laughs> very smart very smart okay so soul cycle or yoga oh soul cycle yeah so you like the fast I love I love like high outlet intensity. for your energy yes I love high intensity I do I do soul cycle and I do hit so those are my favorite and I also do yoga but uh yeah, if I were to choose, it, yeah, it would be either Soul Cycle or or Hit. Okay, um, I am terrible at Hit, so I'm <laughs> um, very jealous. It's just something my body can't do, but I, I keep trying. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Last question: World travel or staycation? Oh, world traveler. Yeah, where do you where uh, do you have a bucket list or somewhere where you're dying to oh go next? Gosh. I, I mean, I want to be able to explore uh, the world, you know, and I do, I do a little by little because I'm not able to travel as much as I want to because of the business, especially international trips. I love international trips and I have to be very uh, like strategic about when I can do those trips because of, uh, of my job. But, um, oh my gosh. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I definitely want to go. I've been wanting to go to uh, Patagonia for a couple of years now. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I got close a couple of years ago. We were in Argentina and just didn't, because I think- um, You have I to go even further. Yeah. You have to go further. And then there's time that it takes to get into the mountains. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah. It's, yeah so I, that's what I mean. I'm like a lot of the trips that I want to do, it's like, they're so far. <laughs> yeah. So now I'm trying to find that balance. I'm like, how can I get that done? How can I go on those trips while still, you know, running the company? <laughs> yes, we've got to, we've got to pace ourselves. Yeah, especially right now that we're growing. 
So the company is growing. And um, I think if we weren't growing and things were just kind of uh, running, right, it would be different. But the fact that it, it gets really challenging when the company is growing, uh, there's a lot of changes that require your attention. Yeah. So. Well, that's a super exciting, uh, you know, prospect on the horizon growth of the company. Congratulations. That's, that's so cool. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, no, we're right in the middle of it right now. It's, uh, it's exciting. Uh, but it, it's, you know, it, you have to be careful. Like that's my job, right. To, to mitigate risk. So I get really excited, but I always, um, you know, stay also humble because I think it's important to not let success get to your head because it can go, it, you can lose everything overnight. For sure. If you think, if you, think you know it all, you're going to, you're going to fall behind and you're going to, you, you can lose everything. So uh, being always like open to learning and um, being curious, you know, I think it's so important and be able to, uh, at least for my job, be able to analyze risk. It's, I, I do it, you know, all day long when I make decisions. Wow. That's, that's incredible. Well, thank you so much for being here and, uh, spending your, your precious time with us. I, I really appreciate, um, you know, hearing your journey and, uh, you know, learning about how you, as you said, mitigate the risks and, and achieve balance. And it's, it's, uh, so important to hear, how our role models do it. And uh, yeah, thank you so much. No, thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Um, this was so much fun. <laughs> thank you for supporting another episode of Grasshopper's Balancedness Podcast. If you liked it, please rate, review, and subscribe on our Apple and Spotify pages. Send me a screenshot at hello at grasshopper.com. That's G-R-A-S-S-H-O-P-P-H-E-R to enter yourself into this episode's surprise raffle. And be the first to hear about upcoming episodes and events by signing up for Grasshopper's newsletter, which can be found on our website. Happy balancing until the next time.